before I go into our talk, because really uh, to, 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 to Pennsylvania, um, we really feel that the importance of this talk today is so that we're not that little red hen, and that we don't all leave here and take this information, kind of feel ra you know, all rallied up, and then we don't take it home with us. That's, that's us not doing our job. It has to be me. It has to be us. We have to do this together. Uh, before I go into what Pennsylvania is doing, because we, we have stayed aggressive on this issue, we do have some meaningful updates since we last met, and we do have an ask of everyone when they leave here so that we can start moving this needle faster. Uh, I want to start my comments um, with a thank you that will give us a little bit of background. So I, I get to sit up here on behalf of our delegation from Pennsylvania, who does this work year-round, on behalf of our board of the Pennsylvania Medical Society, uh, and present, uh, and present um, our panel and present our positions but everyone in this room, or many of you at least, knows Dr. Chuck Cutler. Um, for those of you who um, have had the opportunity to hear his talk, it is, it is unbelievably enlightening, and it is the reason why the Pennsylvania Medical Society is where we are on really trying to push this issue. Uh, his insight, his work, his, his eloquence with his talk are really tremendous um, and uh, really, really deserves all of our, our appreciation. The, the work that we do at the Pennsylvania Medical Society really came from, from Chuck's initiatives and, and Chuck's efforts, and, and I personally really appreciate that. From what Chuck originally presented to our board two to three years ago came a continuing professional education task force in Pennsylvania that's constantly looking at and monitoring and considering what's going on with the stakeholder organizations. The ABIM is in the crosshairs for a whole host of reasons that are readily apparent when you listen to today's talk. But ultimately, they're in Pennsylvania's crosshairs because they're in our backyard in, in Philadelphia. And one third of our members have asked us to do something. This is one of the biggest, if not the biggest, issue on our plate. And, and we're paying dues, and we want our, our medical society to do something. And so we have. And our continuing professional education task force has presented many things to our board that I have presented here at different meetings. Uh, in the five or six meetings Pennsylvania has, has convened uh, with the AMA and in Pennsylvania with national stakeholders. Uh, some of the more recent activities I want to present because I, we're excited about them and we're hoping that others will join us because the lift on all of this is heavy and one state can't do it alone. Um, first, our board through our, uh, was presented more information from our professional education task force. Our board was told by our task force that while there is um, a strategic plan, it appears to us by the ABIM to give the appearance of change through a whole flurry of emails that ultimately it's window dressing, and that it's ultimately not moving the needle, it's not taking accountability, it's not taking us to where the physicians need to be, and most importantly, it's not positioning us to the future with a representative board that really takes responsibility for their actions. Our board of our state medical society heard this, and we're going to announce for the first time here today that we have voted a statement of no confidence in the board of the ABIM from Pennsylvania physicians and from our board. What we're asking today is that while that message is, is important to Pennsylvania physicians, it resonates much more if we have 50 other states that join on to that message. And while 50 may be a lofty goal, I'd like to see some. So what I ask is that you take that message back to your states to tell your medical society boards that the board of the Pennsylvania Medical Society has listened to talks just like this. We've spent the time to look at the data. We don't make anecdotal decisions. We made informed decisions. We don't say that we're going to stick with the system because it's what the public wants. We say the public wants well-trained physicians that are accountable for what they do, and this isn't it. And so we'd ask you to ask your boards to do the same. Um, on the screen, you see um, um, it's my email address, but it's with the Medical Society. And I'd ask you to take that, that email address and reach out to us in Pennsylvania and let us know if you have questions. What will it take for us to help you take it back to your state for, for this one ask? There's more to come. Uh, and if your state is willing to sign on to that statement, we'd like to release it together from all the states uh, that are willing to sign on a statement of no confidence in the leadership of the ABIM. But that's not enough. That doesn't, that, that's a nice statement, um, and that may get some public attention, which is much, much needed. But ultimately, we need to do something, something more. Uh, so we uh, presented the, our task force presented another ask to our board, and our board approved it. Our board approved funding to retain the services of a law firm to look into do we have, could we potentially have standing in a lawsuit against the ABIM. And while we believe many of what the things they're doing are not just unethical, but that they're illegal, are we in fact correct? We're doctors, we're not lawyers. And so those funds to, to bring in a law firm to give us that opinion were approved earlier this year. Uh, about a month ago, we got back the report and it told us not only do we have standing and not only do they have an issue, but they have over a dozen issues where they felt that there, there was illegal activity, and any one of them could be brought up for a lawsuit, let alone all 12 of them. 
So the Medical Society Board charged us to come to this meeting and to talk to all of you and say, take this back to your states and ask them, are you willing to learn more about this? Whether or not you're ready to join on or not, we're happy to, to speak to any other states and let them know what we found. Uh, and we'd be, we'd be more than happy to have you say you'd like to join on in the effort if we decide to move forward with this. And lastly, because that too, we felt was not enough and we need to get this ball rolling much faster. We have started the process preliminarily, but it will be happening more and uh, hopefully we'll have a meaningful update by the fall of looking at what can we do with our legislature. As I said, the ABIM is our backyard, it's our state. And we fortunately have an attorney general race with two candidates who have held public office in Pennsylvania and in our opinion are, are great candidates and both very have shown very faithful positions to positions, one of which in particular we have very strong ties to with the Pennsylvania Medical Society. And it's our intention to meet with them in advance of their election throughout this uh, election season and talk to them about this issue and find out what would they be willing to do. It's our hope that they'd be willing to do a lot. But ultimately, we feel there's enough grounds here that a legal, legal avenue would be helpful. So these are some of the things happening in Pennsylvania. But if we leave this meeting with just this information, we, we haven't done our job for, for, our, for our members.